Obey. Obey. We're not obeying to be saved. No, we're obey obeying Jesus because he is our Savior. Amen? We obey him. And again, it's a step that he wants to do in us so that there's actually room to be baptized by the Spirit of God. Now, again, help me with an illustration that we did together last uh, week. If I can have two volunteers, one person to represent us with this glass. Thank you very much. And someone on this side to, rep to be pouring out. Okay, so remember, you need to, to be around on this side. So if you'll hold this, and if you can hold that. So, okay, come around this side if you a little bit, so we don't block, okay? Uh, we're blocking you, right? You might want to adjust just a little bit for this illustration, just to come if you want to see it. Okay, so my friends, how would you describe this glass? Turn it upside down. There is, it's empty, right? So, except for air, right? There's just air in it. So this is what we're, uh, we, we are like without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We can still be like a beautiful glass. You know, you can see through it. That's nice. But we can be running on empty. Uh, how many of you feel like you're a little empty? You would like to be refreshed by the Spirit of God. You want to be refreshed? So this is what it's often like. Okay, if you can hold this. We first find out about this truth and we say, oh, Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. That's awesome. Okay, I want some of that. Some of that. So we say, please give us that Holy Spirit. Let's we'll stop already. And remember, we were doing that illustration during the revival? <laughs> because as soon as the Holy Spirit starts really being invited into our life, we often will resist, unless if we humble ourselves and surrender, we will resist because as soon as the Holy, Holy Spirit comes in, He will dis make us uncomfortable with what's going on there without Christ. Does that make sense? So, but hopefully by God's grace, we'll yield to that still small voice. And we say, no, Jesus, I want more. So let's fill it all the way up as close as you can to the top, but not going over. And we say more and more and more. Give us more and more and more. More and more and more and more and more. And more. We'll stop right there. And this is what it's like for us as Christians when we say, I am so thirsty, God. Pour out your spirit. Come around a little bit on this side still. Pour out your spirit on me all the way up. But as soon as, wait, as soon as he starts coming to that last room of, the, of our minds, you know what I'm saying? That last room of our hearts, that place in our life that we're thinking, I don't want the Holy Spirit to go there because I'm afraid he's going to take something I want. Are you tracking with me? This is the Christian who does that. But the Holy Spirit works in this kind of percentage. He loves to work 100%. He does not like to work with 80%, 90%, 99%. He loves to do things all the way because the Holy Spirit is bountiful. The Holy Spirit is generous to his people. He likes to do things all the way with you and me. When we don't invite Jesus to do things all the way through the power of the Holy Spirit, quickly we get dumped out and quickly we run on empty again because when the Holy Spirit does not have everything, Satan will snatch away what we do have. What do you long for in this room? Do you want a little? Do you want a mostly filled cup in your heart? What do you long for? So Acts 2.17 says, I'll pour out my spirit on all people. So let's pour out. Let's pour and pour and pour. Fast, 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 fast. Until this happens. This is what... God the Father wants to see in the life of a Christian who is being full of the Spirit of God. Okay? Full to how much? Overflowing. This is what he longs to do. Go faster, 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 faster. This is what God longs to do in our lives. And just when, just when, you can switch places, okay? Switch places. Just when you think you have as much as you can possibly receive, Let's say that you are a young person here or a young person watching or an older person watching and you say, God, you are giving me such amazing opportunities for Jesus, but I feel like I'm over my head. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's too big for me. I need more help from heaven. Then God says, oh, let me give you more than you even expect. And he's, he always has more than you think. 
And he says, if you think you are receiving my spirit so far, I will do it much, much more than you're thinking. He likes to pour out like a river, like fast, fast, fast. He likes to pour out like that. That's what God longs to do in the life of a Christian. Amen? Amen. Thank you. You know, whenever you think you've received as much as he can give you, God always says, hey, there's another resource for you of the Spirit of God. Thank you, guys. Let's give them a hand. Okay? Let's give them a hand. But what's interesting, even though Acts 2.17 talks about the pouring out of the Spirit of God, what does John the Baptist call this? He says, one's coming who will do what? He will do what? Baptize, not pour out. Baptize. And so I need... A young lady to come up and help us real quick. Where's a young lady that's going to help us? Can you set that somewhere for me, please? Thank you. I need a young lady that will help us real quick, please. Thank you so much. Now, if you were going to baptize this sponge, what would you do? So stand around this side. So if you're going to baptize a sponge, because the John the Baptist said... Uh, that, that the one to come is going to baptize, right? So would you show me what that looks like? Does she need to do it partly down in the water? How far down? How much? Until the sponge is completely, say it with me, immersed, right? Are we right? Okay, so is it immersed? Okay, now, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? I'll take that. I'm going to do the safe part. You do the dangerous part. Now, when a Christian, sister, if you can be right here, you can be right here. You be right here, okay? When a Christian, oh, they're getting worried. When a Christian has been baptized by the Spirit of God, there's such a sweet thing that happens. When they, when they touch other lives, this is what happens. So just take it and give her a toss. Just give her a toss. No, 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 no. Don't squeeze it out. If you're squeezing it out, it's no longer fully baptized and immersed. It needs to be fully immersed. Okay, give it a toss. Quick, 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 quick. There you go. Give it a toss. Quick, quick, quick. Give it a toss. Oh, it's looking a little too dry. Looking too a little dry. You want it uh, totally immersed. Don't squeeze it. Just toss it to your sister. Are you ready? Just pick it up and toss it. Pick it up and toss it. There you go. This is what God wants. Now, stop for a second. You see what happens? Are you a little wet? Put your hands up so they can see your hands. You see, when we are baptized by the Spirit of God, every relationship in our life ends up being touched by the Spirit of God. It doesn't mean that if she's a Christian and you're a non-Christian, it doesn't mean that that interaction forces anybody to follow Jesus. I don't mean that. But I mean that she cannot help by being touched with the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, you know, all those things in her. Amen? Amen? Now, do you want to see one more demonstration with this or not? Give me one brother in Christ that will come and be in the middle. And I'm going to show you another interesting thing that happens when we're baptized by the Spirit of God. One brother in Christ in the middle. Come on, Mark. Okay. Now, because we're in the, the time where we're trying to uh, respect social distance because of the coronavirus. We're going to have to do this a little bit creative. No, don't, it's okay. It's all right. So I need you to stand this way, facing him, with your hands up like this, and you facing him like this. So step up a little closer. You need to be able to handle this. And so both girls on both sides going like this, okay? Now, you're a little, a little tiny bit closer, but you're not going to hit him. You're going to be kind to him, not hit him. Now, this is what it's like for us, for a Christian who is baptized by the Spirit of God. This is what happens. So take this like this, but then, you know, hold that please. Then, let's say that he goes onto this campus and this sister says something that, like, doesn't feel good. Like, it's not nice to him. So just go like this, like you're, you're hitting. And then every time one of these girls does something like this, like to bother you, I want you to take it and squeeze it. Okay, so take it on the top side. Yeah, just like that. Whoa, whoa, just whoa, whoa, whoa. Just one, you got the idea. Okay, so, so let's say that she's unkind, and what happens? So you go like this, and what happens? And then let's say that you say something rude to him, 
and what happens? So you like that? You see what happens? And let's say that, that she says something uh, critical of the way he lives uh, on campus. It's another hit to him as a person. And what happens? Do you see the point? Yes or no? When you are full of the Spirit of God, it doesn't mean you're going to quit getting hit by life. You're going to have bad things happen. But if, is it Mark? Is it right? If you're not baptized by the Spirit of God, just leave that for a second. If you're not baptized by the Spirit of God, then someone comes up against like this. Okay? Then guess what? How do we respond without the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Whoa! See, he's going like, oh yeah! Okay? And if she says something unkind, okay? Unkind, put your hands up. You see? This is what happens. This is why we as Christians so desperately need the baptism of the Spirit of God so that when these things happen, one last time, this is what happens. Just do it in slow motion. You get hit, and that's what happens. You get hit, and that's what happens. People need to see the love and the joy and the peace and the patience, the kindness, the gentleness, the goodness, the faithfulness, the patience, the self-control in your life and mine. I don't know how to manufacture that. Do you know how to manufacture it? I don't know how to just try harder to have it. I just don't. I'm too imperfect. Are you? But I know our Heavenly Father wants to give us this gift so that it's the work of the Spirit in you and me. And this is what comes out of our lives. Let's give him a hand. Thank you very, very much. Now, we're in this time right now, and I invite you to do this simple thing. If you have not been baptized, that's something you can consider. But right now is a moment to go in twos. And why not we just take, go through these steps, okay? So like if I was doing this with Mark, I would be praying with him on my knees. This is actually a prayer time. And we'd be saying something like this in our own words. Jesus, I'm coming to you. I'm thirsty for you. And I believe in you. Amen? I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I believe you can give it. Number two, I'm asking, right? So I'm asking for this gift. Jesus, please clean my heart out and give me the strength to turn away, repent from anything that gets in the way. And finally, God, by your power and only by your power, I need you to, to give me the strength to be obedient to you. I invite us to come to Jesus in that simple way with our prayer partner. And let's go through these simple steps and let's ask for Jesus not to just give us this, guys. Not what? Not a sprinkle, but to actually take our life, baptize us with the Spirit of God right now. This is not theory right now. Do you know if we humble ourselves right now, we can be baptized by the Spirit of God. If we come to God claiming these promises, He can give us this gift. And every day as we ask and receive, I believe he increases the capacity so that we are filled with more and more and more. Amen? I invite us to do that in twos right now. And we can just pause the camera while we're having prayer.
Amen. Amen. Thank you for that song. Now we're ready for the last bit, and it's a very simple way to end. I invite you just to turn to your prayer partner and say, how, how are you going to, to make this a part of your life? Like, what's this going to look like in your life to be baptized with the Spirit of God, not just one time, but again and again and again as part of your very life, every day of your life. What is that going to look like for you? And then sit back and listen very closely. And I'm going to give you just a few, just a moment to share back and forth. Like, like what are you going to do with this lesson from the Word of God? Is this just going to be something like, oh, that was nice that we studied it? Or are you actually going to become, every day of your life, a baptized by the Spirit of God Christian who is full of the Spirit of God, sent by the Spirit of God, and everywhere you go, you're going to end up people getting people sopping wet with the good news of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the fruit of the Spirit, the kindness, the goodness, all those things. Are you hungry for that? So ask your friend right now, what, are you going to, what is the Holy Spirit, here's the way to say it, what is the Holy Spirit impressing you to do with this good news of being baptized with the Spirit of God? Okay? One more minute. Just one more minute. Okay, students. Students, I'm going to take the microphone up here. I would love to have a couple of you come right up here. And let me just ask you, what are you going to do with this good news from the Word of God? So just give me a couple of people, maybe some of you that haven't come and shared yet this morning. Uh, what are you going to do? What, are, what is the Holy Spirit impressing you to do with this good news of the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Are you going to put your notes in something and just put it into storage? What are you going to do? Come on up. Okay. And while he's talking, I need another person already ready. I would like to have uh, three or four of you, uh, guys and girls, okay? So go ahead. Start us out. What, are uh, you going to, what is the Holy Spirit impressing you to do with this good news? If I practice this daily in, our, in, in my life, now the Holy Spirit impressed me that uh, Jesus said that I will send a comforter. So it means uh, if I practice this, uh, I, I will be a positive uh, uh, optimist, like a positive thinker in okay. how to deal my problems. Because I believe that the Holy Spirit 
is there to comfort me. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Come on up. And I'm asking some people on this side too, okay? What, what is the Holy Spirit impressing you to do with this good news of this? Um, of the Bible. After our prayer and we have this uh, conversation about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit impressed me to humble myself and to have a lowly of hearts like you, to be able to um, have this fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. What is the Holy Spirit impressing you to do with this good news? For me, Pastor, is... The Holy Spirit impressed me to stood up on my feet, grounded to Christ. As you can see, Moses stood up and lift up his thread uh -huh. as physical obedience. Then Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, will come after this. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. How about you? What is the Holy Spirit impressing you to do with this gift of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit impressed me to, after that, uh, after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, to humble myself and to encourage my dear roommates and other friends to share with them how the Holy Spirit baptized me. Amen. Amen. So she wants to pass on the good news. Amen. This is our last moment together. My prayer for each of us is that we don't just put this truth in storage. God impressed me to share this as the last thing before I go out because we are lacking in this area. We're trying so hard to live for Jesus faithfully on our own. The Spirit of God is here among us according to the Word of God. He is the Comforter. Jesus said, if I go away, I will send Him to you. He brings the presence of Jesus with Him wherever He goes. He wants to give you and me power to run from what's wicked and run to what's righteous. He wants to give you and me the power to live a life that pleases Him. He wants to give us the power through the Holy Spirit to be fearless even unto our death to honor Christ. Fearless, a fearless living witness. I invite you just to join me as we stand together. And to those of us who are, are viewing um, with this video, when you see it, I invite you just to stand where you are. And let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we have often lived our lives in such a dry way, like a dry sponge. We have often lived our lives like the cup, the empty cup, looking shiny on the outside but being so empty and dry on the inside. Father, I know I am, I am tired of that kind of living, and I think my student friends here are tired of that kind of living, amen? So God, we humble ourselves right now. You've heard the prayers of the students here. You've heard our prayers. Please, Father, wash our hearts clean. We believe in the promise of Jesus. We're asking for this promise of Jesus that he gives of that we can be baptized by the Spirit of God. By his power, we turn away from what we know is wrong and we run to you, obeying you not with our own power, but with, with that still, small voice of the Spirit of God, his power. And we love you, God. Thank you for this gift. I pray that the young men and young women here will shine with Jesus shining through them. Bless them wherever they go. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and keep you. Amen.